Hello everybody, welcome to NAF kickoff round of 16 match between Beltronico and his humans and Noxa and his lizard men. Beltronico has a pretty standard human team, except the flex in the human team, basically the 12 are set in stone. And then you've got the flex between a 13th player or an apothecary and Beltronico has chosen a third option, which is two halflings. I wouldn't be fielding one. <laughs> However, I guess he's going to foul with it, right? His plan is to foul this fella. That's his idea. It's got to be his plan is to just get loads of fouls in. I guess foul the skinks and stuff. But yeah, pretty standard. They've got a tackler, two guarders, a mighty blow, block catcher. And Garden the Ogre. A few of them did this kind of build. Um, pretty standard. I, I don't. I don't. I personally don't like the Mighty Blow Blitzer. I think it's not really necessary because if you want to blitz with Mighty Blow, you can blitz with your Ogre. Um, so I'd rather have an, ex an extra guard to fight the uh, you know, the stronger teams. But there you go. And then obviously the lizards are completely standard with a five block. Then the, the Lizardman thing is they've got two rerolls and an apple. Um, but they've got they've, they've got to have two rerolls, right? And then you've got this chameleon skink. You can drop that down to a normal skink and get a third reroll or a reserve. So they've gone with apple and camel skink. Camel skink is pretty terrible, honestly. Um, it's good for two turns. Two turn attempts. It's worse for 15 turns of the game. Or 14 turns of the game but it's marginally better when attempting a two turn touchdown if he picks up the ball on this chameleon skink then I can tell you right now that is incorrect and luckily he doesn't in fact amazingly he takes the guy furthest away from the ball to pick it up kickoff return not that good and now he's just got a shit skink right for the for the half for pretty much two halves of the game, he just has a shit skink. <laughs> Muppets are streaker, glorious. Thank you very much, Muppet. <laughs> Enjoy your points. So not very aggro from the lizards, is it? Just, uh... Wait, did they not even blitz this guy? weird. Inviting pressure as well on the skink particularly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do you want to geofight and nail him? You can't foul him, so I guess you come back and blitz this guy. Blitz this guy, push him back, and then get a big foul on him. That is surely the play for the humans here. Surely the player, right? I can't see them doing anything else because they've got a follow-up hit as well. So this guy comes in here, this guy comes in here, he blitzes, pals him, and then you've got a uh, one, two, three assist foul. Would have been four if it wasn't for a stupid ogre. Oh, you fool. I mean, not to be mean, <laughs> but isn't that halfling there to foul people? If you're not going to foul with that halfling, then what is he? Why is he on the pitch? I quite, I quite like the uh, the blitz up and back. I mean, it didn't have to be there. It could, it could have been either place. To be fair, you still need get. In fact, though, this is worse. Going to get two, two assists. Weird. Not what I would have done. Who can say if it's good or bad? I don't know why he's fielding the halfling there. Like, you're fielding the halfling to make fouls. Turn one on the most basic turn you can possibly make. <laughs> the least thinking you're going to have to do in the entire game. And we're, all, we're already 36 seconds into the time bank. Not 
ideal for Beltronico. Yeah, Big Chichi, it seems weird to in, to get two halflings, field one, and then not foul with him when there's like an opportunity for a three assist one. I think that's meant to be like his turn. He's because he's got infinite time at the moment. That's not that's that's not going down. Oh no, at the end of turn is one twenty two. Yeah, so why does he only have two there? Oh, he's just made a cast. Must be a bug, yeah. Oh look, he cast the halfling. Oh, well done, halfling. You just you just exposed yourself for absolutely no gain, and you could have that you could have been a lineman, but instead you're a halfling and got cast. They are they are two minute turns, aren't they? Yeah, they are two minute turns, so I'm I'm assuming it's a bug because he's got two minutes. And he definitely didn't take, you know, seven and a half minutes on his first turn. So I'm assuming this is a visual bug or something. Or some other kind of bug. Yeah, I know his his is correct because he but he actually ate into his, right? Whereas Noxa hasn't Hasn't eaten into his. No Noxa has not moved, has not used five and a half minutes of his of his ex of his uh, bonus time. He has. He just hasn't. So whether this is a visual or a real bug, who knows? But amazingly, Beltronico did eat into thirty seconds of bonus time on turn one, which resulted in uh, giving up a halfling. To be blitzed and not getting a foul with him. I don't know why he fielded him. I, like I literally don't know why you would field him on defense. Like unless it's to foul, I just don't understand why you would field a halfling. <laughs> I am bamboozled. Doesn't save his lino. Interesting. Oh, I guess he can hit the uh, he can hit the crocs, can't he? Two more assists. Or oh, one more and a mighty blow blitz. Oh, he's going over here now. And we're already going into the two minutes of the... <laughs> we're already going into bonus time. <laughs> yep. Keeps him in contact. Well... I'm, it's looking like my dream of the lizard men getting eliminated is is going to die very quickly. <laughs> oh dear. Beltronico with these humans has, has won his first two rounds. Despite taking an extra 30 seconds each turn. On the nothing turns. Like he's going to burn all of his bonus time before a turn that matters at this rate. Oh shit, look at this, he's just going for it. He's just going to get his catcher served. What a strange decision to make. <laughs> you can't keep the result. <laughs> you don't need to burn any more bonus time. There we go. Oh man, oh man. One, two, three, four, five. So you can hit him hit him up as well, right? You can put in this camel skin and then hit him up. Not like that, because that doesn't give him an assist on the follow-up hit. So that was 
incorrect, as Kalon would say, and he's moved the wrong guy. Wait, he's moved the wrong guy, so now he's hitting from the wrong angle. This is just wrong, right? This guy, he hasn't got block, but this guy's got block anyway, so this guy was closer, so he could have gone one, two, three, four, five. Six square hitting him, pushing him up, and then you've got an extra chance of hitting him, and it's not going to go in the crowd, whereas now he can only push him to the sideline, which may go in the crowd, which may hurt him more than the opponent. So this is absolutely incorrect from Noxer. So that's a, there's a ray of light for me getting to the uh, getting to the final because that was that was uh, I don't know maybe that's an intermediate mistake. I don't really know what the different levels of Blood Bowl are honestly. I know what top level Blood Bowl looks like, but I'm not really you know. I'm not really sure on what an absolute beginner looks like or what somebody who, uh, you know... Like, tabletop's a bit different, isn't it? Because generally, people who play tabletop, and this isn't a uh, judgment on their character, <laughs> but generally, people who play tabletop aren't very good because they don't play enough. They can't be good. It's like live poker players compared to online poker players, right? You know, those days where Doyle Brunson was the best player in the world, you know, he, he may, you know, whatever, however many hands he can play, you can just play like a hundred times as many online. Obviously with Blood Bowl, you're not probably going to play a hundred times as many games, but you can. When, when you look at, when you look at how many games Daedal played a season in CCL, you know, <laughs> when you look at some of KFOG's teams on, uh, on Fumble. You know, people can just play so much more online. It's simple as that. Simple as that, and it's so it's not it's not even about like you know, elitism or anything or anything like that. You know what I mean? Anybody saying any formats better than the other? It's just simple maths, isn't it? It's simple maths. Number of games, practice matters, and it's just so much easier to play many many games. Even if you have friends. <laughs> that want to play with you, you know, in real life. Honestly, I've got three friends. We're all within, like, 10, 15 minutes traveling difference of each other. And, you know, we've got to... We'd have to get our team out, pack it away, go there, unpack your team, unpack your board, or someone else has to set up the board, play a game or two or whatever, and then pack up the board, put it away, pack up your team. You know, and it's just so much of, so much of a ball here to do all of that that we just had our league on Fumble. <laughs> when we wanted to play, we just played on Fumble because it's easier. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, purely. Now, obviously, at the absolute top end of tabletop, it's the same as Blood Bowl 2 and the same as Blood Bowl 3, mostly because it's the same guy at the top of all of them <laughs> in KFOG. <laughs> but, you know, it's... Um... I, that's the thing, right? Format doesn't really matter, right? Elliot's Elliot's winning majors on Fumble because he's good at Blood Bowl. If if Elliot played tabletop, he'd win tabletop tournaments because he's good at Blood Bowl. Simple, isn't it? It's not rocket science. Yep. <laughs> well. <laughs> Way to show up and spoil, ruin my point, Elliot. <laughs> you fucking loser. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, well. There you go. <laughs> there can be a bit of a uh, a bit of getting used to playing, can't there? That's that's the one thing, the one thing that uh, some tabletop, you know, some people going from you know video games to tabletop. Like obviously, video games takes care of the a lot of the mechanics, doesn't it? So like having to remember to roll your roll dice, having to remember to move your uh, own turn counter and of course your opponent's turn counter because they will never ever remember. They'll conveniently won't put any thinking into their turn counter. And yet, you know, at the end of the half, 
when they need another turn, suddenly they'll remember that actually, actually, oh, they just, do you know what? They, uh, they've got an extra turn. Isn't that funny? Or, uh, or you know, if you need another turn to score, then, oh, look, I forgot to move my turn counter earlier. Some might say that because of people being like that, that the, uh, the, the rule, the illegal procedure rule was an actually great rule because it made both players pay attention to the turn track the game state but you know some people cried about it so it's no longer in the game yep is this just a hit on the ball by the way one two three four five six seven gfi gf and also it's a bit harder but it's nearly just a hit on the ball isn't it one two three four five six seven gfi gfi it's not really a good hit anyway I, the problem is, it's just it's just one more thing that you've got you've got to think about for both players. You know, that that's what I found. And I was playing a very good, a very good esteemed tabletop blood ball coach, and it's not an easy game, right? Because you know they're, they're good at blood ball, right? Like the top end, the top end is just as good as the top end of online. It's mostly the same people. Um, and you're playing this person and you know you're putting your mental energy into trying to defeat them at a game of blood ball and you have to track the game state for both parties and it's a small edge and it's within the rules but i think it's annoying it annoys me enough like you know i wouldn't call them a cheater for it but it, it annoys me enough for, it, for me to mention the fact that it's annoying <laughs> Yeah, it's, I don't really either, honestly. Like, you know, it's it's obviously it's the reason that I got into it was being into Games Workshop-y shit. Like, I got into Blood Bowl in 1990 because I was into Games workshop -y type stuff, you know, Citadel Miniatures, Hero Quest, you know, Hero Quest, all that kind of stuff. I thought the models were great. And, uh, and because of this... Well, I don't know what the weird flex is. Because of that, that, that that's why I got into it. I got into it because of the tabletopness, you know, like the models and everything. I, w I probably wouldn't have got into it as a video game. Because it's just weird. It didn't follow. It didn't follow. Um, I probably wouldn't have got into it as a video game because it's just a bit slow and it's not really meant to be a video game, is it? So it's it's interesting that people have got into it as a video game. Oh, I thought it was nice if he was going to put this guy here. <laughs> I quite, I thought it was quite a good move if he was going to put this guy here, but he didn't. He put him away, so he can, you know, he can just demolish all of this area. Um, oh, shadowing! Whoa, here we go. The value of the chameleon skink. Um, so yeah, so I got into it through tabletop, and like you know, the artwork was amazing. The fluff, of, like background of all of the stuff was amazing and the models I thought were amazing some of the mechanics were like fun and you know obviously then when 94 is when it became the what we recognize as Blood Bowl with the turnover and the block dice and everything and a lot of that was fun but um you know it's not really inherently because it's tabletop right like it's I think nowadays I can't see me ever playing tabletop ever again, despite owning like about 30 tabletop teams, a custom built uh, ta stadium, tadium? a custom built stadium that I created myself, uh, despite having all of that, I just can't see myself ever playing tabletop again, so yep. It's all right, yeah, it's all right. I enjoyed it. I'd, I'd say custom built, custom half built. <laughs> uh, I built it mostly and like half painted it. And then uh, I, did, I did three sides. I did three sides, like I did three stands. So the way I did it was, I had a stand here, a stand here, 
stand here and then had the like the dugouts here but um I didn't finish it I didn't finish I didn't finish the dugouts and uh and I didn't paint it all I've got a photo somewhere I'll post it if you're interested if you're interested Eliod I'll post the picture of it because I had a I think I've still got the picture of it somewhere. Can't see his wife's son. <laughs> oh my god, you could do that. Have to join the Discord and leave it again. Yeah, yeah, do you do that? <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> join the Discord, leave the Discord. <laughs> Right, so there you go. So again, as I predicted, that's exactly where he went, and he took that guy exactly away from where I said he should have been. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe all right, a blood ball, turns out. Hey, unbelievable, Jeff. Unbelievable, Jeff. And this is the thing, lizards can just, like, switch sides like this at will, can't they? They're so fast. The Saurus being so fast and so strong is ridiculous. They've got complete mobility especially now down players they can't tag Saurus out for key turns and in fact they've got a they've got a catcher almost tagged out and now it's just looking impossible for the humans at least the humans have got a bit of speed to keep up a little bit but uh honestly at this point the humans should just be blitzing skinks <laughs> I know I mock the reddit strats but three, four, five, six, seven. G if I'd hit him, like it's not even terrible. That's what he's doing. Now he should be doing this because he realizes he can't stop the score. And this is like, you know, a terrible last ditch effort. Hopefully he's doing it because of that. Rather than he thinks Blitzing Skinks is a good idea. Because Blitzing Skinks isn't really a good idea. This is terribly positional as well. But you know, it's just a, it's gone that badly for him. Two players down. Nothing in front of the ball. Killed. Probably should have uphill the crocs, right? More chance to more likely to work than the dodge, and uh, you don't get hit by mighty blow if you fail it. Uphilling big guys has got a lot better in the new rules. Mighty blow only working on the active player's turn makes uphilling big guys much more attractive. Not as attractive as Elliot, of course, but much more attractive than it used to be. I, I find hitting skinks not fun when it doesn't work. That's the that's the problem. Like it's great when hitting skinks works, but like it's the worst when you knock down four skinks on a turn and don't break any armor. <laughs> as I did in my uh NAF kickoff game. <laughs> I was I was very sad, <laughs> knocking over four skinks and breaking zero armor. Flip me. Oh. Crocs is the biggest one. Especially in this format, you can kill the crocs and it hasn't got block, you know. On ladder, everybody's croc seems to have block, but... Uh... This one. Oh, so he didn't stand up the catcher. Didn't even try to stand up the catcher. Oh, no, because he, he failed the dodge and got KO'd. And now he's abandoned the catcher with three turns left. Interesting. Oh, he, uh, he just rolled double skull. For well, there you go. So he, he greeted the pushers. The dice log showed a random 3 plus dodge that was the turn over the previous turn. And then the dice log showed the reroll and the double skull. So that's why I tend to not agree reroll blocks. But also, what the fuck is wrong with the dice log? The fact that the dice log does this makes me think Artemis's insane RNG rants. Um... <laughs> might not be 100% founded in fantasy because that is a weird quirk isn't it that it shows that it shows that that is weird but i mean obviously that that reroll did work <laughs> the reroll went from pushes into double skulls so the reroll worked <laughs> so 
but like you know the, the thing is like with cyanide it's like you can't trust them to have programmed it correctly can you that's the thing you cannot trust cyanide to have programmed anything correctly <laughs> When, when using a reroll shows you a random dodge from the previous turn in the dice log. That uh, doesn't exactly instill you with confidence. Now this uphill has to be taken, right? Because uh, it frees up the other blitzer. Three D with tackle. Got all pillar crocs. There we go. Look at that. Now he's one in four to get the knockdown, wasn't he? But uh, he blocks his own path. <laughs> to follow. <laughs> Not what I would have done, but who can say if it's good or bad. It does save the mighty blow from getting hit by the Saurus. But he could have just pushed it to here or here. Well, no, here and not had to dodge. No, here or here. Either other spot he wouldn't have had to dodge. And he pushed him into the square that made him have to dodge. And cost a square of movement across the pitch. So... It's NAF style, Game of Vision, it's NAF style, so the five skills for the Lizard Men have all gone on block, um, as is pretty standard. Oh yeah, that, that's that's been around for ages, Raven, that's been around for ages. Uh, the humans have six skills, which they've gone for three guard, tackle, mighty blow, and block. <laughs> oh, Tom Schniz, you rascal. <laughs> As you can see, there's Keat. <laughs> Is this Naf? <laughs> I think... There's no reason for the skink to not be over here. I guess, no, this guy could do something. He can 5 3 at the moment, can't he? I guess he's going to blitz him. And he can fall 3. So. I was thinking, you know, you could just be away from him. Which you could be. You could be here and just out of range of him to force the. Uh, or like a 3-4-3 three, three for him. But yeah, you're going to blitz him anyway. Ooh, that might have made it easier for him. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, G, 5, G, no, it doesn't. So if you push him to here... So it's a 3-4-3, three, three, right? Uh, GFI. Probably go for that, honestly. 3-4-3. Three, three. Has he saved his re-rolls? He's got two. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. GFI. Uh, the problem is if he forces him in, he doesn't get the early score, does he? If he could have he, if he could have taken the push and forced the early score and given himself a two-turn chance, this would have been all right. Yeah, the humans have spent a lot of time bank. Um, a lot of them on very simple turns as well. Maybe it's chalice nerves. Hey. Maybe it's chalice nerves. But he has been... Uh... Oh, wow. Well, that, that was a good reroll if ever I've seen one. Doesn't use the apple. He's got an apple. But I mean, he is going to score, right? So 75% of the time he gets him back anyway. Could stun this guy. Oh, he's already blitzed him. He re rolled that. Oh my god, that's terrible. 
So, the reason that rerolling that is terrible is next turn the lizards are going to score and the humans have a halfling and an ogre so have a chance of a one turn touchdown they've also got a catcher but you know I think more realistic in this case is the halfling throw teammate and this guy dodging here was going to achieve as calcium Kaz would say the square root of fuck all so that was a terrible Reroll. Rerolling to hit a Crocs on 2D with Mighty Blow. Not terrible, but this was just no upside, all downside. Terrible, terrible reroll there. Um, and the Crocs come with us back. And of course, we saw the amazing touchdown cel celebration there. Um, great, great cutscenes as me. always. In my humble opinion, one of the best commentators that I've ever heard in my life. Great cutscenes from Sinai Bears. That was a fantastic cutscene we all enjoyed with that touchdown. <laughs> in my humble opinion. <laughs> so, yeah, this is uh, looking very good for the Lizards. Two cars. And no rerolls for the one turn. Lizards are very much OP, yep. They're super, super strong in NAF style. Super strong. Um, they're not great against Underworld. But they are very good against Dwarves. I didn't think many people would be using Lizard Men because they're not very good against Underworld. And I anticipated a lot of Underworld, so I went Dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> but it turns out people went lizard men anyway. <laughs> that is hilarious, Kaz, that McNaughton is visiting. <laughs> McNaughton's visiting Wendy. <laughs> Calcium will be there too. <laughs> oh man. Amazing. Man, I can't believe I can't believe how lucky I was when I went to the UKTC and just randomly decided to do you know, to 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 record the uh the the top table match and the top table match was McNaughton versus Stoll like two of the absolute biggest meme lords in Blood Bowl 2 it was brilliant wasn't it oh AV plus one on this guy was that random or did he choose it because he was over there is it for the whole match match four I think the humans are set up for the one turn. I like the ogre one turn. But like really, really, really badly. And didn't matter anyway because they dug school. Yeah. Mm. I held off until the third round because I thought, you know. It's the NAF kickoff event. <laughs> maybe a bunch of <laughs> maybe a bunch of not very good players will be in. But you know, after two wins, I thought uh we'd get, you know, down to the nitty gritty a little bit, but uh there have been some suspect players. Maybe the occasion's getting to them. Who knows? But there has been some uh less than stellar play in all three games <laughs> that we've seen in the round of 16 so far. But hey, you know, if they're watching, they shouldn't take offence. They should stop whining like a little baby and try and fucking play better, eh? <laughs> no, you know, like I'm tr obviously I'm always constructive, aren't I? I'm always constructive. I always explain why a move is bad if I think it's bad. 
so you know there you go it is what it is isn't it fielding the halfling again does he think halflings are good <laughs> like, I don't know why he would field one on defense <laughs> okay now he's not playing on offense I'm always constructive. I'm literally always constructive. I always have been. I always have memories I haven't always been. Memories I haven't always been. But I've been I've been constructive for a long time. Obviously there comes to a point where it you know, like the like the uh like the the World Cup match with Striker, there comes to a point where you can't be constructive anymore. <laughs> but that's rare. That is rare that something is is quite as amusing as that game. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Amazing. I right, gotta throw her. <laughs> there are limits, <laughs> yeah. So here's the new feature where you can see what uh you know what positions people are and it, it is kind of useful right especially for commentators because i don't know what a catcher looks like he, he looks identical to a lineman almost doesn't he it's so hard to tell the difference from a distance so uh that's pretty handy obviously it's super easy on the lizards even the chameleon skink is like just green so the one that's the same size is a different color <laughs> so the lizard men's are totally easy to see but uh it's a bit helpful for the humans uh, if you're not used to it. Yeah, I think it, you know, it obviously looks better without it. But um, I think, you know, if, if you were playing this game as the lizards, you know, it only takes, wait, what would it be? One. So two clicks to see the opposing team. So you just have to click a couple of times, then you could see, you know, what all the humans were. And you wouldn't make the mistake of keep hitting the air. Uh, keep getting an assist to hit the catcher or whatever um, so there you go yes the, the different shades of yellow for the hitting pieces is so it's so cyanide isn't it it's so cyanide that they uh, <laughs> that they make <laughs> blockers and blitzers the most similar pieces in the game <laughs> and they made them the most similar colors <laughs> <laughs> well done well done, Cyanide. You know, that just sums up pretty much everything about the game. Really does. Like, you don't need to be an expert at Blood Bowl. That's the thing. Like, like you know what I mean? You don't need... You don't need me or Elliot. You know? Uh, who I think... I don't believe Elliot's a VIP. But you don't but you don't need somebody like me or Elliot. Or somebody like Dave or, or Olivia Dulac to tell you... That's fucking stupid. <laughs> Do you, you should be like you. You. You just need. You know, like they didn't need a team of experts to tell them this stuff. They just needed. Like they, you know, any anybody could tell you. That the most casual blood bore in the world could tell you that. Um, if you're adding a feature, for clarity. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe make it a bit more easy to distinguish between the two more similar players. <laughs> Maybe. Just an idea, Cyanide. And funny, because throwers and runners... Oh, no, throw, so throwers and catchers, isn't it? Throwers and catchers. Not bad, right? Throwers and catchers. Like, they're, they're similar... Similar, like, ball -y things. I guess that's what they were thinking, right? They're both, like, ball -y things, so they've got similar colours. And they're both hitty things, they've got similar colours, except they were just too similar. I mean, there's no blockers here. Oh, yeah, there is. So these are blockers, this is, yeah. Your blockers are, are dark yellow and your blitzers are bright yellow. And then big guys, for some reason, have their own colour. Uh, doesn't seem necessary, does it? But there you go. Oh, what what are what are skinks? Are skinks runners? Is green a runner? Are these skink? Yeah, they're skink runner linemen, so they they've got skinks as runners rather than linemen, and uh, the camel skink is special.
Yeah, they did. They did say that they were thinking about making it uh, customizable. Even I don't think it needs to be customizable. Like obviously, if if they can do it, and it's easy and convenient to do, but I'd much rather have the defaults be good, and not have to customize it. You know, <laughs> because the thing with the customizations is you've got to customize. Like it's actually customizing the players is really tedious. You know, having to click on the player and that, and then click on the customize, and then click each individual part. So if they may, and then you know the save saved setups, the saved setups are quite good, but the fact that their team, you know, you can't save just pure setups. The fact that they're team dependent, so you you know you could create a team and then create like four setups for them. Take ages setting up four setups, and then you know like that's just not great, is it? So um, wow, reroll comes in with an overtime format. He uses a reroll on a one dice block. On a crux. Well, he could have just 2 D'd a Saurus and then got another assist in. Made it a 2 D. Maybe he thought it was a 2 D. I don't know how he could. Maybe he thought the Ogre's in a different square. Oof. Um. Yeah, and, and yellow is catcher, right? Yellow is the catcher positional in uh, in Blood Bowl history. It was green for blockers, red for blitzers, yellow for catchers, white for throwers, grey for linemen. So it's a... Uh, that's probably why they made it yellow for dodge. Right? Like, obviously, green for guard. It guns with a G. But also, it's a blocky type of skill, isn't it? Hello, Hamez, by the way. How did you, how did your tournament go after the... Uh, or was it just a one day? Was it just a one day? Or was it a two day? Because I saw you'd gone. You'd won the first and the third. Was there a second day, or was it just a one day? But, you know, customising it, customising the colours could be okay, because they've got the, the Games Workshop colours, haven't they? Three, two, one. So three, two, zero, really, right? Three, two, zero. Not terrible. Is this uh, Blood Bowl to Boomer? Blood Bowl 3. Uh, you know, you'd be forgiven for looking at the UI and thinking it was Blood Bowl 1. Uh, but, you know, this is actually this is as good as it looks, honestly. It's a bit brighter, isn't it? It's a bit brighter than other people's streams. Yeah, it's the NAF kickoff, uh, so it's a 64 man tournament. And this is the round of 16, so, you know, we've already. Everyone here has already won two games. This is the third third round, and it's like uh, it's a slightly slightly less TV than is usual on one thousand one hundred rather than or eleven hundred eleven hundred rather than eleven fifty. So slightly slightly less TV than what nafsters are used to working with, and uh, and slightly less skills as well. But you know, it's essentially a a pretty standard NAF style tournament. Uh. <laughs> Hello, Inarian. So, what are they winning? Uh, there's some warp stone involved. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the main thing is just the adulation of the fans. You know, like obviously, whoever wins this, people will talk about them forever and say, "Oh, do you remember? Do you remember the guy who won?" That pointless little tournament. Oh, I remember him. Yes, he was great. Um, but so so there is going to be there is going to be a five thousand dollar prize tournament run by Cyanide, and if you the finalists of this will get to the play-ins, and if you get to the play-ins and win two games, you will get to the sixteen player finals, and in the sixteen players finals, if you win. Four games, then you will win the uh, 
the finals. So, you know, the people in this round are potentially three three wins away and then two wins away and then so they're nine wins away. Noxer and Beltronico are nine wins away from three thousand or two thousand dollars for first place. So there you go. It's a satellite to a satellite to the finals. Exactly, Christopher B. Yep, yeah, that's how I could have I know poker, that's exactly how I could have described it, but I didn't. But also it's an opportunity to play a NAF style format, right? In Blood Bowl 3. Because um I lost my other game. Uh, which game? I lost on Fumble. Uh, no, no, I, I've, I've won my NAF game. I shouldn't made spoilers. You can look on YouTube. Is it on YouTube yet? No, it's it's getting published tomorrow or something. I've, I've won my first three games. And I've already won my round of 16 match. Spoilers. <laughs> spoilers. So yeah, I am in the I am in the uh, I I will be playing the winner of Andre versus Cube Farmer, I think. Cube Farmer with Underworld and Andre with humans. Jimmy will win all, I don't know about that in our either. I think uh even if I win Well, I mean I was just I was trying to not be uh, I mean well yeah, I mean I was I mean, I'm watching this match, though, right? I'm not. I shouldn't be talking about myself and tooting my own horn, should I? I should be. Uh, I should be talking about these wonderful gentlemen playing here, and not trying to make it all about myself. Um, yep. <laughs> but uh, it, no, the, the next round's going to be hard for me. It, 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 whether it's against Andrew with humans or anybody with Underworld. <laughs> <laughs> if it was somebody less good than Andrew with humans, I would fancy my chances. Um, but, you know, Andre is very good. And it doesn't matter who has the Underworld. Underworld are a monster team. Even with even with Dwarves, Underworld is still a monster team. So, you know, whoever I play there is going to be difficult. And then the uh, semi-final is going to be, if I get to the semi-final, the semi-final will probably be against Lizardmen. Uh which is obviously almost unwinnable. Almost unwinnable for dwarves, lizard man. So yeah, that's it's not gonna be fun. It's not gonna be fun. <laughs> Even if I get past Andre or Cube Farmer, I've gotta beat Lizard Man. Yuck. Disgusting overpowered lizard man. One of which might you know which might be this team. This is the team that's in the same uh, this is in the same half of the bracket as me. So, yeah. Surprisingly, it didn't make that a three dice from the Crocs, isn't it? Just going for the 2D there. Made that pretty dangerous. They made a really good swing back. He really overcommitted over here. Really committed really hard over here. And uh, there could have just been like one less skink over here, easily. And then assisted either there or there, make this a 3D. And that would have showed up this side to like, if he had one in nine there, you can get a mega switch going over here. <laughs> yeah, on a, lizard men are re are a nightmare for dwarves. They really are. Oh look, the the bug has fixed itself now. Noxer now has now that he's actually used his bonus time. He's in seven or eight. So, but uh, Beltronico has actually used six and a half minutes of bonus time, which is pretty ludicrous. He's been using it since turn one. Turn one, he used thirty seconds, which is, you know, you should not be using your bonus time on turn one. To do a very simple defense, so you know it's look. Beltronico is probably you know all of these people. Well, not all. It's a lot of these people could be their first time using Blood Bowl three, right? Um, K Fog has only put like it's about K Fog's third game on Blood Bowl three, battling with the UI. Can't tell who all the players are and stuff, you know. So he's probably going into the bonus time because he just you know he's grappling with the UI, battling the UI. As much as the opponent, so it's uh, it's understandable if they make some terrible moves because they couldn't read the board, and if they'd gone to bonus time because they can't control the game. 
because it's pretty terrible. Yeah, your turn's just ended, so you still get your two minutes. But, you know, that could be pretty critical, as we can see. He's, he's running out of turn time on this turn, so could be critical. Potentially critical. So we just turn over now. Which would have been better than turning over after he failed this dodge. So there you go. You would have benefited if uh, if he had no time bank that turn. <laughs> Not on turn one though, Raven. There's no there's no excuse for using you know. You should you should use your your your, your bonus time burned should be you know at crucial junctures. Well, that's it. And they're generally going to come at the end of the half or at like the midpoint where like they're trying to make a breakthrough or whatever and you're trying to stop a breakthrough or a swing back or something but turn one but turn one when like you're just making a blitz and you know keeping your guys in more or less rule of five there's really no reason to use your uh, time bank but yeah, it's, it'll be it'll be U, UI honestly. Like it's it is understandable. It's, you know the you know at the end of the match, I think it shows you the coach ranking, the, the coach rating, or whatever, or coach level, coach level. I think it shows you the coach level after the game, and I wouldn't be surprised to see that uh, you know Beltronico is not not very highly leveled. You know, Kfog's like a level five coach or something because he's just he's just playing in this. I really like the bonus time system. Yeah, I think it's a great idea, really great idea. You know, should have been in Blood Bowl too. Yeah, they've they've got some good ideas in this game, but um, yeah, it just is what it is, isn't it? This is tough for the humans, isn't it? Humans, humans. As Elliot would say, you can block the Crocs with the Ogre to free up a Lino. You can blitz him, and then what tag? And then he can one D this guy, and then he can two D this guy, and then he can run through and potato. It's pretty terrible. But instead, he's gone for a blockless block with a ball carrier. And uh, doesn't stand anybody up. Leads with a blockless block that he doesn't re-roll. What? Did he not re-roll that? Or did he... Hard to tell what's happening, isn't it? Oh, so he rolled a skull, and then the dice slug shows a random dodge from the previous turn, or from two turns ago. And then it shows the re-roll. So yeah, he did re-roll it. So, he, you know, he won in nine, which is a bit unlucky, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I think you know, to be fair, to be fair to the players in this NAF event, there will be, there will definitely, I'm sure there's UI issues and again familiarity they haven't had the chance to get used to it the famous the famous quote <laughs> you'll get used to it <laughs> that was cyanide when everyone was telling them everything that was wrong with their game their response was not oh thank you people that we've got to uh, help us you know with <laughs> fix the game well uh, you know like the vips were already in place uh, as i found out the vips were already in place before the the first beta because that inarian document a lot of the people who were involved in the inarian document were vips and uh the v so the vip system already existed um before the first beta and their response to those vips were you'll get used to it we are right you know, all of the pretty much every response in the document was, "We're right and you're wrong." <laughs> you know, we were like, we were like, uh, you know, skill colours, 
Skill colors, you know, should be separated by the, you know, like the skill icons. The colors should be the category you've chosen them from because the game, the board game, already sorts the skills for you. They're already pre-sorted into categories. Use those categories for the colors. It's confusing for new players to have these random colors when you could just use the easy ones. And their response to that was, no, actually, this is better for new players. <laughs> it's like, you know, they just, they were just like, mm, no, it was just pretty much most of their answers to the feedback. So, the, you know, they just weren't interested in listening to the VIPs from, from the very start. So there you go. And this game is now over. See, it's over. Doesn't even need to stall out, does he? Like, just in case of some kind of crazy thing happening. Yeah, it was a crushing defeat. An absolutely crushing defeat. I mean, lizards are, lizards are a monster, monster team. I like this. is a bit safer, isn't it? Because he can't get the 3D. Well, can he is a catcher, isn't it? So, 3. He could have he 3D'd him with the Crocs. But, um... That's that's safer, isn't it? To go there and then you push him onto the thing, you push him out of range, and you've got a team reroll to use it rather than uh, maybe bone heading, maybe uh, f you know failing the block on three dice with Lona. Much better to put him in and just get him pushed back. Really nice. And so there you go. <laughs> starring Keanu Reeves Keanu Reeves presented a thing about Braun GP which is so weird so weird just Keanu Reeves randomly talking about F1 but uh it was quite a good little quite a good little documentary uh, it was the, the best part I thought was hearing the uh the uncensored radio because you know obviously when, when you watch F1 on the TV you hear them on the radio and they say Good job, Jensen. And they say, thanks. And that's about all you hear. And but then, then they, had the, they had the uncensored one, so he's just going, fuck's sake! <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> and all this. And that was, that was good. I think, I think F1 would be a lot more popular if you heard the, the, <laughs> if you, if you heard the drivers screaming, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> That was great. There is another one in about an hour. Yes, Big Chi Chi. In about an hour. Blood Bowl 3. Oh, wow. Holy shit. Elliot not just calling this game over, which it definitely was. He's calling Blood Bowl 3 over. And it's hard to argue with him. It could rise from the dead if they make fundamental decisions that they have so far doubled down on. So... Not likely. <laughs> but, you know, all we can do is hope, isn't it? No, of course it won't. Of course it won't. But we can hope that it will. <laughs> we can hope that it will. But, you know, anybody with a normal working brain would agree with Elliot and say Blood Bowl 3 is dead. And anything else is just, you know, milking what you can from it. Milking what you can from it. Um, in terms of if you're a streamer, what content you can get. Okay, so I thought Beltronico would be a level 1 coach and he's a level 99 coach. <laughs> so there goes my unfamiliarity with the UI argument. Well, there you go. Look, he got to the round of 16. He got to the round of 16. Good for him. Um, commiserations in the match, though. Could not beat Lizard Men, who are OP. And uh, there you go. Congratulations to Noxa. Um, I'm a little bit sad, of course, that Lizard Men won. I really wanted both Lizard Men team to lose so that I wouldn't have to play Lizard Men. But there you go. Uh, <laughs> nothing personally understand. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.